Hello everyone, welcome back. This is I Say Cosm. Today we're continuing with Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones. Now I'm looking pretty awesome with my cultist gear. And here's the Arkham Post. We're going to have a look in there for Julian's letters. Dang. Choose me, my flesh is yours. Hmm. Yep. And you couldn't really expect anything different than that. Alright, let's deal with this quick. We win. I'm gonna move up here. Protect Cosm with your lives. Is that an escape? Oh no. Berserk! No! What are you doing, man? Oh man, he's like the best character I found. Take that! And that! We have here. Oh, Jul. Oh, great, they had it. Julian's unsent letter. Cool. Alright. Let's loot the place and then move on. Now. All right, let's have a look at the note. Yans, nope. What is it, this one? This one. Read. My ever shining light, Maria. I am writing to you from a godforsaken town called Arkham. I don't doubt that you're upset about how we parted ways, but please, baby, let me explain. The reason why I left without so much as a goodbye is because you'd never have believed me if I told you about the crazy hit we set our sights on. But with God as my witness, we made it, Maria. We really made it this time. You can't even imagine what kind of digs we're in right now. A ritzy hotel suite. Who would have thought that the bedraggled Boston rejects would lodge at the fanciest hotels, eat the best meals and guzzle the best hooch? Certainly no one would about a week ago. I'm talking about gold, Maria. Real, glittering gold. From now on, I swear you'll never have to work another damn day for the rest of your life. So say goodbye to your mop and apron. Better believe it, baby. We're richer than the Rockefellers. Whatever kind of good-for-nothing lollygagger I was, you never gave up on me all these years. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. But know that your lover has struck gold this time. I mean literally. Miss you, my shining angel. I'll be in your arms very soon. Julian Perez, signature. No. Uh, I don't know where the Dead Willows is. Oh, that was outside of Arkham, wasn't it? So, it seems to me that Julian and his gang, the Boston Rejects, may have stolen some gold that they should not have. And now they have a curse set after them. Can't remember what the last guy's name was, but he might be still alive? Keelan? And if Keelan's still alive, he's gonna be the next one. That much is all but certain. 
Let's go have a talk to these kids, eh? Hey? Is this the mute girl? The wide open eyes of this little girl seems to be fixated on a distant spot. Though you have no clue what she sees there, you're convinced she is looking directly into the abyss. Hello little empty eyes, I've heard you've seen some fantastic things. She doesn't reply, there must be a reason why this little girl is called Donna the Mute. My sweet baby girl, we'll return to a not so distant past together, you and me. Mm, nope. Look Miss uh, Donna, don't talk no more. We told her, you know. We told her not to wander away from the protection of the Watchers. She didn't listen. Watchers? He points to the oxidized metal gargoyle squatting on the collapsed bridge. The silent Watchers, they protect us. I wish I had a Watcher to protect me. They only protect kids, mister. You're too big and old. They say your dreams are taint, uh, uh, tainted. They say it's too late for you. Oh, really? Where'd you go? Here we go. Do you know what she saw? No, mister. She was breathing like this when she returned to the tunnel. Playfully imitates the spasmodic breathing of the girl. Let's say... How do I find a way inside the club? I don't know, we'll figure that out eventually. Go down here first. Alright, let's see how quickly we move through with Danforth's compass, eh? Very quickly. Uh, on your journey, you come across a surprisingly intact highway with several derelict automobiles. You wonder about the whereabouts of the drivers, as every car you've seen so far has been deserted. Not a single corpse at the wheel or out on the road. Regardless of what happened to them, this phantom of a road will surely make for speedier travel. Good. You've spotted a cemetery before you, would you like to approach it? I feel like in every video I've done we have to do this kind of stuff. Ah oh boy. Oh. That doesn't look fun. A most inauspicious and restless feeling grows in you with each step towards this dark stone vault. Which is standing amidst the desolation like an antechamber to the netherworld. The centuried, moss-ridden stones lean their mournful head towards the dead soil, as if lending an ear to the restless murmurs of oh, most bleh. restless murmurs welling up from beneath. Oh my god! Uh, uh, we can't save, so in we go. <laughs> I'm not going to risk it. Where is it? That's a bell. Where's my lantern? A sudden blowing of a chilling gun. Okay. The door is shut. Your custody under the outer darkness. Okay. That was quick. I'm a slow reader. No! 
SF Sawyer's corpse. The corpse of a man suddenly tumbles into view at your feet. He appears as if he's writhing in pain and his feet have been severed from his ankles. Huh? What's the point? Silver ring? Can I do anything? Huh? What was that about? Do I even want to know? Okay. Um. You see a slender, dark haired young girl in the traditional dress of the Abenaki, one of the native tribes of New England. Excuse me, but I wouldn't head in that direction if I were you. Did I ask your opinion? Are you you or are you me? I count myself lucky for that, especially in Dead Willows. I wish you the best of luck with. Jatl. But I am after this psycho killer. I am a killer of killers, which makes me good, you see. She makes an exaggerated gesture of surprise. A murderer? I don't believe it. With a straight face, she continues. Pardon me, sir, but I had the impression you were slaughtering each other like pigs out there. Nah. I see that your nails desire to be set free from those oppressive fingers of yours. Let me help you. She starts screaming all of a sudden. Rattle, bakau, bagakau. My blood. Oops. Ah. Uh. Should I have done that? Um. Oh no, he's gonna die. <laughs> Paranoid, no! <laughs> okay, um, something happened just before. I entered combat with these people by accident, and because I'm in a fit of paranoia, decided to do the only good thing he's ever done run up behind the visitor, this guy. Stabbing him in the back for a critical hit, doing the most damage he's ever done with his knife and killing him. Which then led to a party wipe, so... Now we're back! We're gonna try something a bit different. Uh... May I ask why, young lady? Because this Dead Willows tribal ground and Wudyatl don't want your kind here. My kind? We call your kind the Graveyard People, Pale Man. The ones who chose to live in the city that became your tomb. You're living in a huge graveyard, you see. All those fancy buildings of yours are like giant tombstones. And your situation is different? We had the courage to leave the tomb you call a city and start a new life out here. 
We've turned, returned to the old ways, the ways of our ancestors. We have broken the shackles of your world. The world you shaped by plundering, burning and raping. We are the free Abenaki of the Willows now. We may not have much, but at least we have a home. Uh, we're going to try and play this like real nice. Let's see. It's nice to hear that you have your own place now. Thank you. But where was your sympathy when I was cleaning your floors? Yep, we'll ignore that apparently. Um, Wattel is the first chief of the Willows tribe. He became the voice of our ancestors and showed us we, were, we are not to condemn. We are not condemned to follow your ways. He guided us to this place and taught us the ways of the wild. Wattel washed away the stains of our past and let us see who we really are. The only thing I knew before was scrubbing your filthy floors. Oh, and also shutting my mouth when white men insulted me. That counts. Now I know how to erect a tent, clean the water I drink, and track my own prey. She puts special emphasis on this word while looking into your eyes. Through Wajato, we have become real Abenaki. I used to be Mary, but Wajato gave me my real name. Now I am called Onis. We of the tribe all owe him, but the white men also owe him. Wait for her to continue. They owe him a mother. I miss my mummy too. I repeat myself, I wouldn't head in that direction if I were you. You live in the dead of willows. We have, you know. I don't think you have much of a chance out here all by yourself. She lowers her head for a short while. We have our ups and downs, she continues angrily. I think we are done. You don't have anything to say apart from arrogant observations. Okay. Let's. Ooh. You gaze upon a tall, muscular man with bright Abenaki patterns tattooed on his skin. The moment he sees you, he draws his machete and runs towards you with the eyes of a predator locked onto his prey. Without hesitation, he raises his extremely sharp blade in the air and swings it at you. You immediately know that this is no feint. Stop! We'll take the hit. The Indian's swift attack slashes your arm. You can feel the blood slowly soaking into your sleeve. Mere seconds separate you from a fierce battle for survival with this frenzy man. Uh huh. Let's see. Great, now I just gotta find a way inside the clubhouse. Okay, we're back. There's a trap door here. That I did not see. Uh... I bought a new spell as well. But I haven't rested. Gotta smash this thing. Emma? Oh, looks like it worked. Alright, let's not worry about that. The ratio can deal with them. No oh deal. I'm 
Unfortunately for the intrusive and equally venturesome dead man, this ancient sarcophagus was not to forever detain its menacing resident betwixt its worm-ridden confines. Ah, uh, looks like I have another spell. I just gotta research him. Well, hello, buddy. I did. Did you find a way into that den of debauchery? Finally, tell me about it. Carefully listens to your directions. Then into the dragons, then I go. I owe you, sir. Now let me think about the places I passed while following the shadows. Uh, after some arduous calculations, you finally have a potential lead on the location of the murders. I have to warn you, it's not a good idea to go there alone. He's not with you anymore. The adrenaline of planning to face his sworn enemy has taken over completely. Goliath, I I'm coming for you. David is coming to slay you. He moves to the door. Hey, wait. Oh god, he's gonna die. What have I done? Well, we tried to stop him. Well, I think that'll about do it for this one. I know what I have to do next. And it's not going to be pretty. So... I guess I'll just prepare myself in the meantime. Anyway, this has been I Say Cosm. Stay tuned for more Cosmic Horror video games. Thanks for watching.